All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's on the Power. So I want to do my full recap of the 2018 Mr. Olympia, um, the finals and results. So the top five was a pretty interesting top five this year. So it wasn't really exactly what everybody expected. Um, and of course, we had a new champion this year being Sean Roden. So this Olympia was an interesting one. We had two new Mr. Olympias, both in the men's physique category and in men's open, um, both of which Hani Rambod's guys were both defending Mr. Olympias, Phil Heath and Jeremy Boyndia. Um, both lost their title this year, so two very big upsets at the Olympia, uh, making for a very interesting show. So getting to the top five in men's open bodybuilding, you had Brandon Curry coming in fifth. Um, I think a lot of people were surprised that he placed that highly, which means Big Rami most likely came in sixth, and Dexter Jackson was, in fact, outside of the top six this year. So I will say at the night show, at the finals on Saturday night, Big Rami looked significantly improved Compared to how he looked at the prejudging, he looked a lot drier, a lot harder. He had more detail and separation. Um, so I actually thought Big Rami was going to place higher um, after seeing the photos from the night show, but that wasn't the case. Brandon Curry did enough um, and looked good enough to crack that top five. Coming in fourth was William Bonac. Now, William Bonac looked good this year. I don't think he was as sharp as he was last year. Um, I don't think he was as sharp as he was at the Arnold Classic either. So I think that pretty much explains how Roy Winkler took the edge over him this year. Just William Bonac is one of those guys, he's got so much muscle and he's got kind of a blocky physique that really for him to be a really dangerous guy, Bonac needs to come in with conditioning, you know, razor sharp conditioning on 110% um, to be a top threat like he was last year. Um, and he was still very good. His conditioning was still very good. It just wasn't as sharp as it was. Um, and that allowed Roy Winkler to sneak up and have arguably the greatest year of his career this year, winning the Arnold Classic Australia earlier in 2018 and picking up his best Olympia placing ever. I predicted Roy would be in fourth. Um, I didn't think he would be in third, and that's just a tremendous accomplishment for Roy. It's been a long time coming. Very happy to see it. Um, Roy Winkler is a guy. He also won the Fans' Choice Awards. So I guess he was the favorite of the show, and honestly, he did look phenomenal. So Roy Winkler, extremely impressive showing here at the Mr. Olympia this year. I'm very proud of Roy Winkler. So let's go ahead and get into one and two here. So this is the interesting part. So Phil Heath and Sean Roden. So at pre-judging, um, I think it was pretty clear that Phil Heath was off at pre-judging. Everybody kind of uh, made that assumption pretty quickly based on how he was looking. And Sean Roden brought arguably the best package he's ever brought at any point in his career. I mean, the conditioning that Sean brought was mind-blowing. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Sean wasn't really on anybody's radar this year as being a one or two guy, um, including myself. I did not have Sean in that top three this year. Um, but when he showed up at pre-judging, I knew um, I was going to be eating my words because Sean Roden looked incredible this year. He looked absolutely amazing. I can't say it enough how good his conditioning was. Um, the conditioning throughout his legs, his hamstrings, his glutes, um, everything about him was just 100% on. Um, and Phil Heath came in off, and, and Phil Heath left the door wide open for a guy like Sean to come in with that crazy conditioning um, and be able to take that title. So I think the bigger part of Sean Roden winning was Phil leaving the door open because back in 2016, I feel like the gap between Sean and Phil um, was much more than it was this year. When Sean took second to Phil, you know, I thought there was a pretty big distance between one and two back then. I, I think Phil took the easy win um, back then, but I think this year it was much, much closer. Um, Sean looked much better and Phil looked much worse um, than their previous encounter back in 2016. So I think what we saw here in both the pre-judging and the night show um, was gradually during the course of the show, Phil Heath started to fade um, in both portions of the show. So during pre-judging, during the posing, um, as the posing went on, Phil Heath started to breathe heavier and heavier. Um, he started to be losing control of his gut more and more all throughout the pre-judging. Um, his breathing became heavier at the night show as well, um, struggling to hit the abs and thighs in both the pre-judging and night show. You could just clearly tell Phil was struggling up on stage Something just looked off with the way that Phil was carrying himself on stage. And it, it looked like he knew at the night show that he had lost. I mean, when he came out on stage and they were doing the uh, pose down and the call outs, Phil Heath just had this look on his face like he, he knew he hadn't won. He knew that Sean Roden had it. Um, and Sean Roden looked extremely confident um, throughout the entire course of the night show. And Phil Heath just kind of looking down, not really making eye contact with anybody. I think Phil knew that Sean had him beat. I think Phil knew he was off and Sean was on. So in the past, we've talked about Sean versus Phil, the back shots, how Phil always beat Sean in the back. And I think that was still the case this year. I think in the back double bicep, the back lat spread, Phil, he still took Sean in those poses, but it wasn't as close as it was in 2016. I think Sean's conditioning in the lower body in those back shots was still extremely good. And I think Sean took him in the front double bicep, the front lat spread, the side chest, 
arguably the most muscular from the conditioning standpoint, which is usually Phil's money shot. Um, I think you could make an argument for Sean in that pose as well. Um, the side tricep was one of the main poses that I think Phil really destroyed Sean in, though, because people were acting like Sean just obliterated Phil, and I don't think that was the case. Phil still had much better arms than Sean, much better delts than Sean, much better back than Sean, um, but the midsection just wasn't there. It wasn't good. The conditioning just wasn't there. It wasn't good, um, and Sean really capitalized on that opportunity um, and picked up the win here. Now, personally, I would like to see Phil come back in 2019 and try to get the title back and try to get number eight. I mean, seven Olympias, so close to tying the record. Um, it's got to be very discouraging. And when his girlfriend put up that post on Instagram saying that Phil's done competing, um, it really surprised me because I thought Phil would kind of have a fire lit under him to come back and get his title back. But maybe we won't see Phil versus Sean again next year. Um, and I bet this is a situation where Kai Green is probably kicking himself that he didn't compete because I think, Phil, he did leave the door wide open um, for someone to come in and for there to be a new champion this year. I think this was the year that Kai Green really should have competed, and I'm sure Kai Green is regretting not showing up here. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching the video, and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.